everyone. It's a surprise. <laughs> I did warn you. I've often warned you. Keep. You never know when we're going to be popping up here. So this is Rosemary Altea in the Rosemary Altea kitchen. And welcome everybody. <laughs> I'm sure people are scrambling. I'm sure people are worried that they couldn't watch it or couldn't watch all of it. But don't worry because once we're done with it, you can go on YouTube and we'll post it on YouTube for you. All right, what am I making today? Well, I've just been out in the garden and, <coughs> excuse me, I've got all this stuff. You can see I've got green, green and more green. So this, I love to put my nose in it. It is the best pesto. I just cut it let's say 10 minutes ago. I promise you, I've been out in the garden just cutting my pesto and I've put this little bit in water so we can use it later. But here is my pesto, all leaves are off and everything. I don't actually use the stalks in, in, in sorry, not pesto, I don't use the stalks in, in basil or basil. But I also have, as you can see, in amongst all of this, I can't get to all that, but I have some parsley as well. So, did you guess already? Did I did I spoil it for you? We're making pesto. We're making rosemary's pesto with a little secret touch. So here it is. The way that I like to measure my pesto, it because in in recipes it says a bunch of this and two bunches of that, and who knows what a bunch of anything is. So I've got this nice big jar. And it has all different, every different measurement you can possibly imagine on it. And I'm making double the quantity that you would find in my recipe book. So usually I would use 16 ounces, not in weight. I'll show you in a minute what I'm doing. 16 ounces of uh, basil leaves. Um, uh, you know, so like a clump of parsley, parsley leaves. Uh, I would usually use four ounces of, this is the best Parmesan, and in here, all grated up, and in here is also two ounces of Pecorino. You can add it or not, it's your choice. I like the sort of, the, the, it gives a little flavor, which is one of the little secrets. So if you want to sort of make a, some, you know, a, a pesto that pops, add a little Pecorino in there with your, with your Parmesan. In the recipe it says, uh, let's see, um, what does it say? Uh, two ounces of walnuts, secret. I know some of you are thinking you cannot use walnuts when you make pesto, you've got to use pine nuts. This is my real secret ingredient because I like to use walnuts because they give the pesto a really rich, so like a deep taste. I can't really explain it to you, but it's a really, really rich, deep taste that pine nuts actually don't give it, aside from the fact that pine nuts are so expensive. Who wants to pay for pine nuts anymore? So, you know, walnuts, you can use walnuts, you can use pecans if you want to, you can, you know, can use pretty much any kind of a nut, uh, but I like walnuts, and don't get the whole ones or the half ones. Broken, we're gonna smash them up in a minute. Broken walnuts are great. Garlic, again, in the recipe, it will tell you three to four cloves you can see i've got a few more than that in there i do like garlic in the pesto this is the simplest recipe ever but let me see this i'm going to count for you counting the counting the parsley two three four five counting the salt and pepper six and seven and eight eight ingredients and if you just ignore the salt and pepper there would be um, six ingredients and if you didn't put the parsley in and on and on it goes so you can make this with just simply five ingredients and it's very simple as I say I'm making double the quantity now I get a nice big jug and down the side here you won't be able to see it I'm sure gives you ounces so I'm going to squish this down I've already done this and normally I would sort of use if I was making just uh, if I wasn't doubling it I'd use uh, 16 ounces but it's when it's pressed down it needs to be roughly 32 it needs to be the 32 mark if it's a little more or a little less it's fine so that's that now 
before we go any further, hmm, let's throw these in my food processor. I can hear somebody saying that I don't have a food processor. But you can get those little things, the little bullet things, or you can get, you know, or just chop it really finely. That'll work as well. They're going in there. And along with this, I'm going to make a noise in a minute. Not too much of a noise. I'm going to throw the walnuts in as well. And I'm going to put them on my machine. We should have been timing this really, shouldn't we, to see just exactly how long it takes. Let's put the lid on. Let's, make, let's not make the mistake of <laughs> not putting the lid on. And here we go. Now, I like them to be nice and fine. So I'm just going to take a peek. They're pretty good. I'll do one more just so. Oh. Okay, now, uh, just going to show you this, how it sort of, uh, you know, really sort of gets, it's almost, if you do it too much, it almost sort of click, clings together, but that's also fine. Now, oh, garlic, beautiful, I love it. Now, I'm going to slowly and surely mix this together, so I'm going to actually put a handful of the uh, basil and parsley and why don't I just put I don't know half of the cheese I've got a very powerful um, one of these things uh, if you don't have a powerful one don't worry about it again you can use an immerser you can get a small version you can do it in your bullet little, a little bit at a time let's see Let's see. Um, oh yes, the lid. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make a bit more noise. You don't mind, do you? So, and then as it's doing it, I'm going to shove this in as well. Oops. Just going to be shoving it in. Why don't I uh, take that off and, and, and do it so you can hear me? You don't need any finesse with this, I can assure you. Um, you already can see, let's see, you can already see it's very thick though. Don't worry, you can already see it's all combined together. How well can you see that, Chris? Uh, not as clearly maybe as you would like. All right, well, I'll put some more of this in. And I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce Chris. I even forgot. Can you believe that I forgot to mention that Grady was in the kitchen with me? And just so you know, he was the one who said to me, um, you need to look at your basil because I think it needs to be picked. Always, <clears throat> when I pick my basil, basil, whatever, when I pick it, I like to make absolutely certain that it's not floured. You can use it if it's floured, but in my opinion, mind you, what do I know? In my opinion, in my humble opinion, I'm going to put all this cheese in there. Um, it makes it a little bit bitter when it's floured. But if you don't mind that, and there have been occasions when I've used some that floured, if you don't mind that, that's fine. So look at this. I'm going to take a piece of this. Oh, I'm going to put it all back in there. Why don't I add some salt and pepper? I'm going wrong here. And salt and pepper, I could say to you a teaspoon of each. But actually, when it's all mixed up and you taste it, season it to taste. Season it to how you like it. If you like, if you're a salty person and like salty stuff, do that. If you're a pepper person, as I am, you know, do that. And I think because I filled it so full, here we go with the olive oil. Roughly, if you're doing the smaller amount, then you need to make um, you need about four to six ounces. 
in this I'm going to put 8 to 12 ounces but I'm just going to eyeball it because that's what I do uh, and yeah Okay, we can start Rosemary, there. when you're ready, we do have a couple of questions and comments. Well, let me just do this. You mean we've got people watching this? <laughs> yes, you always have people watching. <laughs> I'm going to give it a bit of a stir here because, um, well, because it needs it. While I give it a bit of a stir, Chris, let's have some questions then. Well, well Eric? Your gardener extraordinaire. Hello, my darling daffodil man. He says, yes, the basil tastes different before flowering. You see, now that's something that I would definitely go to with, with um, Eric, because what Eric does not know about gardening, you don't need to know. I'm going to put a little bit more olive oil in. Now, Brian... I Brian is asking you, do you get recipes from chefs in the spirit world? <laughs> no, but I do get tips, Brian. I do get tips. You know, if I'm making something that I actually don't eat, if I'm, for instance, making a, a meat dish that I perhaps wouldn't eat or, you know, I'll make it for friends because they like how I make it, but I don't necessarily want to taste it if I don't like it myself. So I'll say to Grave, or, you know, what should I do here? And he'll say a little more salt, a little more pepper, a little bit more seasoning here, need some more olive oil in that. Cook that for another two minutes. We get all of those tips. Right. Uh, <laughs> I like that question, Brian. <laughs> right. All right. Lorraine is saying, how fun it is to see oh, you in sorry. the kitchen. Oh, I love it. It's all turning up together. Oh, yes, it's looking great. Sorry, Chris, I'm going to give it one more stir, but I'm going to show you guys what it's looking like as well. Uh, okay, carry on, Chris. Uh, so Lorraine said, how fun it is to see you in the kitchen. Multi-talented you are. Oh, you should see me when I'm sitting knitting. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a knitting uh, class one day. Oh, wait, no, maybe not. <laughs> I've, I've tried to teach people knitting. And um, to be honest with you, I get a bit bored. Because, you know, when you're teaching other people, of course, you're teaching basics, which is fine. But you've gathered by now, I'm not a basic kind of a person. I'm going to give this, I've given it a sort of a stir to get it from around the edges. And... Uh, one more, one more blast. And again, remember, if you don't have a food processor, you can get the little mini ones. You just have to do it a little bit at a time, which is easy. Or you get an immerser, you know, one of those hand immersers, get a nice big bowl and do it like that. Uh, you just have to make sure that it's all incorporated. So one more blast. Oh yes, the whole thing is totally, absolutely coming together. Now, can you see how quickly and easily this, I mean, we've, we've not even been doing this for maybe 15 minutes and that's me talking at the same time. I'm going to see, I like my pesto fairly thick and I freeze it and I've got a kiln jar, jar here with a nice rubber thing on it and it freezes brilliantly. Um, if then of course you have to thaw it. Now one way to do this is you can you can get an ice cream tray and you can put it in ice cream trays and then you have nice cubes and what I do if I do that is I just wrap them in a little bit of foil, put them in a bag Perfect for if you want to add to pasta or you want to, to just, you know, spread on top of fish or so on. There's so many, so many different things you can do with, with uh, pesto. Uh, pesto croutons, you get a nice big thick piece of toast uh, and uh, just uh, spread it with a tiny bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and then 
spread this over the top, bake in the oven, cut it, obviously cut it into squares, bake it in the oven. You've got your pesto croutons, they're the best ever and so fresh and nice. Let me just show you. I could, in fact, add more olive oil to this and I, and I might. Can, Chris, can you see that? Yes, it looks, oh my God, it must smell so fabulous. It, it, wait, wait till you come out here and smell this stuff. You'll want to take a spoonful of it. I'm going to taste it now. See if I need any more salt, pepper. I'm going to add just for me, just because. And I use the best olive oil, which I get from a friend of mine in Italy. And you can see I'm eyeballing it. Now in the recipe, it will say, if you're just making a one, uh, um, the one recipe, it will say six to eight, sorry, four to six, eight ounces of olive oil. If you want it more runny, knock yourself out. This is what it's like in a kitchen. Do what you feel is good for you. Right, let me have a little taste. I could eat this stuff all day long. And remember, if somebody says to you, you can't make pesto with walnuts, we had a lovely lady from Italy. Do you remember, Chris? She was so appalled. She was <laughs> until I said, and walnuts. And she said, walnuts? You can't make pesto with walnuts? Ooh. Ooh. A little bit more salt and pepper. Oh, my God. That is so good. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Now I'm going to blast this. And then you can ask me questions while I put it in the jar. Where's my lid? I don't know. Sorry, I'm going to be loud for a second. Oh, yes. There we go. It's all coming from the side. I wish you could see this, but I don't have a long of lead. There we are. I have to get a, I have to get a longer lead. Um, we're not very organized today. Right. Okay. And look, just look how much it makes. Can you see that? Can you see? We can. How would you put that over pasta, Rosemary? Oh, well, I, what, I, what I do is I cook the pasta, drain it, and then um, a spoonful of, uh, however much you want, but I like a good spoonful, of, let's see, a dessert spoonful. I'd probably use it, depending on how much pasta, but a dessert spoon of this, add some olive oil to it, and toss the whole, toss the pasta in the whole thing. And then make sure <laughs> when you're done and you put the pasta into the bowl, the serving bowl, get your spatula. You don't want to leave any of it up in the pan. None of it goes in the pan. All right. So, Chris, why don't you give it one more stir just for luck. Now, I, I'm going to show you this and then, it, then it's your turn. So, here's the thing. Watch how it drops. You want it to a plopping they call that a dropping consistency how well can you see that Chris can you see it? very well yes so that's it that's called a dropping consistency nice and soft but but still thick uh, when I make my uh, lamb my rack of lamb I've used the pesto this thickness and I will spread it nice and thickly uh, once, I've, once I have seared the rack of lamb uh, and sealed it, keep all the juices in and let it cool and then I will spread this stuff all over the top of it and then I will make some nice fresh breadcrumbs. Is your mouth watering already? Make nice fresh breadcrumbs and then I'll uh, pour the breadcrumbs over the top, pat them in gently to keep the pesto in place so the pesto doesn't slide off. And then I might add a little bit of um, Parmesan cheese on the top in the oven, 40 minutes, and it's done. My friend Karen and I were eating that uh, the other day. There we are. 
And I'm going to do this now, Chris. As I'm finishing off doing this, and I want to empty because I want to show people how much in a jar you can expect by, by doubling the recipe. Uh, why don't we have, are there any comments or questions or did everybody leave now I've made, now I've made it? <laughs> we just have a couple of comments left. Um, where did it go? Lorraine says, uh, you're our own British Julia Child. <laughs> And then asking, do you use small macaroni or spaghetti when you add the pesto? You can do it how you like. Again, I'm going to say to you all, you know, just because you read a recipe and it says pine nuts, like, don't be afraid to experiment. If it says spaghetti or angel hair pasta and you prefer a different kind of pasta, do that. Experiment. That's what, you know, that's what cooking. I'm going to take this deadly blade away. That's what cooking is is all about, you know, just doing things as you want them. Um, I would say, because, because I know a lot of people who make the mistake of saying, oh, this is good, but I'll just add this, and then why don't I just add some of that? And, and they number one, they forget to taste, and number two, you know, before you know it, you've got so many things in, in the recipe, so many ingredients in the recipe, that you know you've lost the flavor the the original flavor that you're hoping to get so as you're adding if you're adding salt for instance or pepper or seasoning of any kind whatever it is that you're adding you know just just taste it and uh, you know just add, add a little taste it if you want more that's great and, and just do it that way so as you can see i'm almost scraped to, <laughs> to the bottom here almost got rid of it so this is my pesto recipe again i'll tell i'll say what it is it's um to make the single uh amount is four ounces of walnuts sorry scratch that two ounces of walnuts three to four garlic cloves less if you don't like garlic that much um 16 ounces pushed down into a into a pot like i showed you of uh, the pesto a little bit of parsley if you want it you don't have to a little bit of pecorino if you want it you don't have to the recipe is there if anybody wants it just just email and, and we'll send it to you um and um and what else i've missed olive oil so yummy excuse me yummy yummy oh do you want the last few questions? So good. I just want to show you this. So look how much. Now that's going to last a while. Quite a long while. There. And I'm going to seal it up. And as it happens, I have some in the fridge. So this is going straight in the freezer. And yes, you can freeze it in these jars, which is brilliant. You know, that's what you can do. Uh, and... Uh, I've dated it. I don't know if you can see. I've got June 22 there, so I know when I made it. And, um, yes, lovely. Yes, uh, Chris. Barb wants to know, do you use pesto in many of your recipes? I, I use pesto in a lot of recipes. I do, because, I, because it's something I really like. So I'll make croutons for salad, and I'll mostly make pesto croutons. Um, I use... Uh, pesto for my for my rack of lamb i if i've got a, a side of salmon and and chris you've done this too if i've got a nice side of salmon if i've got a few people coming for dinner i will s literally spread the pesto uh, <clears throat> over the top of the fish it's actually more delicious on white fish than it is on uh on salmon but it's still good on on any kind of fish fish and you spread it over and bake it just like you would normally do. And um, when you when you bake pesto in the oven, I don't know what happens to it. It sort of gets dry and a bit crumbly, but the flavor is so intense and so delicious, but it goes perfectly with white fish. So there are lots and lots of different things that you can do with pesto. Chris. Any Julia and Lorraine want to know how long can you keep it in the refrigerator? 
In the refrigerator, I'm going to say up this amount. Um, I'm going to say three to four months in the refrigerator. It's still good. It's still it's still delicious. Um, if you don't want to freeze it in big jars, if you've only got a small freezer, you might want to say, okay, I'm going to make this. I'm going to keep half in the fridge. I'm going to keep half in small jars in the freezer or uh, half in a, you can even just put it in a plastic bag, freeze it and just bring it out and just put it into a jar when, when it's thawed out. You know, you don't have to freeze it in jars. Just, you know, use your imagination and, and just do what you, you feel like doing. This is so, so good. All right, just a couple more questions and I think then we'll be done. Okay. Uh, Rhonda says, Rosemary, our family are big dip eaters, like oh. cheese spreads and dips and snacks and things like that. Could you do some more recipes on your cooking shows because she loves new recipes for salsas and dips? Yeah, sure I can. You know, we did a, you'll find it on YouTube. I did, um, we did a cooking show. Do you remember, Chris, when I, it was, it was 4th of July or something coming up and I said, okay, let's do some dishes. And we did half a dozen dishes and it took me less than an hour to do half a dozen dishes. But I think that's a great idea. Now, if you want a great dipping sauce, you can uh, put this, um, a little bit more olive oil, or you can put mayonnaise uh, and mix it together, makes a delicious dip. So uh, there are lots of different things you can do. And certainly I have some, I have some really good, good dips and sauces and all of that stuff. So yeah, we can absolutely arrange that for you. Is there anything else, Chris, before I sign off? Yeah, here? just, just a couple. So Eric, your gardener extraordinaire is asking, do you place banana peels to feed your basil because banana peels soaked in water then apply the liquid to the plants after the peels have soaked overnight, apparently do great things. Now, Eric, I think we're going to have to have you on our cooking show with your little tips and things, or we can actually share with you Eric's uh, website. But uh, I know that Eric is um, setting up a new website right now, but as soon as we have that, uh, we can share all of these tips, Eric banana peel soaked in water overnight and pour the stuff over the over the uh, the uh, basil um, I wonder what else it's good for I'm looking forward to hearing more tips from my daffodil man Eric who is indeed the gardener extraordinaire uh, anything else Chris uh, Kim's asking did pesto originate in Italy I'm not sure. There might be an argument between the Greeks and the Italians, you know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, and, you know, many, uh, many um, gardeners all over the world might say, we've been growing pesto and we make this and we make that. If you, if you go online, you can actually find so many different ways to make pesto and, and some of them without even using uh, basil leaves. So you can, I know you can make spinach pesto, you can make uh, parsley pesto, you can make all kinds of different pestos. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, if you're interested in that, Google it by all means. This is my special because I use uh, two things which are not normally found in a recipe. I add pecorino, uh, just a couple of ounces to my, um, you know, to my... Uh, parmesan and uh, and of course my walnuts but when I was a kid I'm going to tell you a little piece of interesting news about me when I was a, a, a little girl the house that I grew up in outside in the garden there were very small gardens there was an enormous enormous walnut tree and every year in, in the autumn when the leaves fell we kids would be scrabbling about in the leaves looking for walnuts and they first became my very favorite nut anyway uh so this is it i just want to tell you again that uh, when i when i was looking at the at the at the the basil out there and uh, i've got my own little herb garden out there and i'm looking at it and i was thinking oh, it's 
I better, I better get it before it, if, before it flowers. And I've been saying that for about three days. Chris has heard me say that for about three days. And then I had a tap on the shoulder from Grey Eagle who said, now, come on, that needs to be done before you ruin it. <laughs> before it flowers is what he meant. And so I went out there with Grey Eagle and uh, we just had a great time, cut it all. Here we have this look, fresh, 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 fresh. I can remind myself, just crunch it up in my fingers. It's such a delicious smell. But when I'm telling you about Grey Eagle and the fact that he was tapping me on the shoulder, it is a reminder, I think, to all of us that our loved ones in the spirit world are always with us. Even in the kitchen. Oh, sorry, I'm being told by Grey Eagle, especially in the kitchen. And I can hear my daddy laughing as I say that. So um, the next time you're cooking or the next time you're doing anything at all, whether it's cooking or knitting or painting or gardening or just hanging out watching TV, just remember they are with you, they are watching you, they are by your side. Thank you for watching Rosemary's Rosemary in the Kitchen. That's right, right? Thank you for watching Rosemary in the Kitchen. We shall be back at another time. In the meantime, please, 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 until I see you again, everybody, have a very, very blessed rest of the day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to Grey God. Thanks to Chris. Have a very blessed rest of the day, everybody. Make something good to eat. And when you do, think of me. Bye-bye. <laughs>